God bless you. It's my honor to join these voices that have already come before me to share our hearts about reconciliation. On January uh, of 1985, in January of 1985, Senator Edward Kennedy from the United States of America visited South Africa with a team from his staff. He came on a humanitarian effort or to try and understand the issue of apartheid and how he could speak out against it. As they came, they visited Soweto and Durban, Cape Town, they went to Johannesburg, and they saw for themselves firsthand the evil of apartheid in operation. During that time, they spoke out quite forcefully against apartheid. One evening, when they were speaking out and sharing their outrage against this uh, government system that was absolutely destroying lives, one white politician, South African, said to one of the staff people with Senator Kennedy, why don't you go to the Soviet Union? Why don't you fix things up in your own country instead of coming here? Flustered and confused, the staff person said back to this politician, you're running a slave state here. And then he just walked away. Well, you see, what that white politician was raising for that staff worker was the issue of credibility. What Senator Kennedy had come to do was to speak out forcefully against a system of evil that his ability to speak out on was compromised because of the injustice and racism and inequality in our own country. Basically, what the white politician was saying was clean up your own backyard. Before you come here and try to tell us what to do, why don't you deal with the issues in your own country? You see, that's exactly what credibility is about that even if you're telling the truth, if you're in a court of law and you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, but your credibility, the witness of your integrity can be questioned, then what you're saying won't be heard. I'm here to say that we are facing a credibility issue in the church, that there is a problem between what we preach and what people experience of us at times. We're living in a time where people are demanding more credibility of us. In the face of global demographic, economic, and cultural shifts that are taking place all around the world, young people especially are asking and wrestling with questions around the complexity of racial, cultural, and ethnic diversity and how they're supposed to engage their culture. They look to the church and they look to us for answers to help them navigate this new global multicultural reality, but they're hard pressed to find answers when they look to the church because they're no longer persuaded by what we say. Instead, this generation is looking at what we do. They're looking to us to model what we preach, that when we preach Ephesians and say that Jesus has abolished the middle wall of hostility and there is neither bond nor free, male nor female, Greek nor Jew, but all are one in Christ Jesus, they expect to see that in our churches and the communities that we lead. They want to see that in how we treat each other every day. You see, credibility suggests that we have the right, that we have earned the right to speak our truth. And so how do we as the body of Christ regain our credibility? At least in the United States, we're asking this question of ourselves. How do we in a global world begin to regain our credibility? Well, I believe that it will mean that we'll have to take seriously the pressing issues that are facing our world today. How we deal with them or our lack of a, of a, of a response will determine our credibility in this generation. I believe that that's exactly what Dr. Billy Graham was coming to understand toward the end of his public ministry. In an interview with the British journalist David Frost, he was asked the question, what do you see as the most pressing issue facing the world today? This is what Dr. Graham said, and I quote, Racial and ethnic hostility is the foremost social problem facing our world today, from the systemic horror of ethnic cleansing in Bosnia to the random violence savaging our inner cities. Our world seems caught up in a tidal wave of racial and ethnic tension. This hostility threatens the very foundations of modern society.
And so, my brothers and my sisters, as evangelical Christians, we have got to demonstrate the credibility of the gospel by the way we live and what we model of the truth. Amen. 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 The world is looking at us. They're looking for the gospel to be modeled in us. My prayer for us is that we would become a people of such deep credibility in how we live, in the churches we lead, in the organizations we form, the leadership levels of where we are, that we would see the diversity that is modeled in Scripture. My prayer this day is that we would demonstrate that we are a new act of creation, that the old is gone and the new has come, and this thing called the kingdom of God, where people from every nation and every tribe and every language and every ethnic group represents who God is, may we be that kind of people in Jesus' name.